All right, so today we are working on the old Ford tractor. So you can see I just picked up a new rim. That's because both the back wheels on that thing are, how do I put this nicely? They are completely and totally destroyed. Now, one of them I think is in what I would refer to as salvageable condition. Uh, the other one is pretty much beyond hope. Now, I will end up making a video about patching a tractor rim because it's not something a lot of people have seen before. It's not something I would ever do on, uh, you know, on-road equipment, but uh, hopefully we can bring one of these wheels back to life with a little bit of cutting and welding. However, since we have to replace one of them, that's what we're doing. I picked up two brand new tires and, uh, and a brand new rim. The rim was surprisingly inexpensive. It only cost me a little more than 100 bucks shipped. I think luckily that's a very common size and uh, so what we need to do grab the wheel grab the rim and see if we can wrestle these things together so we got our tools here we got uh, two tire irons we got the one that came with my manual tire changer which we used for the front tires of this thing the other day got that new Ken tool one which everybody raves about uh, I also have two hammers a thing of bug spray some PB blaster because well I'm not planning to use this but I normally end up using it anytime I work on anything mechanical and some bug killer because well you know we're in Texas so you need that more often than not all right let's see what happened all right so not really too entirely sure of what I'm doing but whatever happens I'll take you guys along for the ride so if this is anything like the smaller tires first thing to do is stretch the leaves out and then um, and then we just kind of try and walk this bead over the end of that rim there and of course plenty of soapy water to help things slide a little bit easier oh boy hey it's actually going oh it's actually going can it really be this simple Oh, no, it's not good. I should have kept my mouth shut. All right, uh, let's see. I think I saw a guy on the internet use a hammer about this time. Now that really didn't work at all. Okay. On the thing. There. Hey, we're getting it. All right. Oh, this Ken tool thing is legit. words here momentarily but that was the part I was really dreading was getting that first side on all right now what we have to do is figure out where I left the tubes for this thing and shove one in That was harder than I thought. Actually a little out of breath right now, good old hearts racing, uh, but I got it in. You know, that's the thing, when you do stuff like this for the first time, very often things that you think will suck, like getting that first bead around the rim are actually pretty easy, and things you think, you're, there's nothing to do but to do it, actually give you a pretty good workout. Case in point that. I kind of forgot rule number one of putting a tube in a, in a wheel like this which is of course try to line up the valve stem first because then who cares where the rest of it goes, it'll find its own place. Uh, I put the valve stem in like over there, so I'm there like trying to yank this around until it comes out. But we got it. Now all we gotta do is stuff the rest of this over the rest of this. a cool trick that somebody told me I think it was one of you guys actually if so thank you which is when you're trying to work a beat around like this uh, so that this doesn't come undone off this part of the rim what you do is you stick vice sticks on it probably not the best thing for the classic rims on your you know your Chevelle or whatever but for this uh, oh, could have been bad Could have taken a bigger bite than that. This is easier than doing the smaller ones. Oh! Happy New Year! 
It's on. That was incredible. This whole thing took like 45 minutes, including driving up to the house and getting the, uh, the wheel and sweeping the spot on the floor and everything. Wow, that was definitely one of the things that I most dreaded that turned out to be really easy in my entire life. All it takes is a couple decent tools, and honestly, I didn't even really have a clue what the heck I was doing. All right, get down where you guys can see me here. Now, a lot of the time when I do things like this, people ask me, Stretch, you know, uh, you know, why are you wasting your time screwing around down there on the floor with this? You know, we see you buying new tools all the time. You know, you're a decent enough welder. We know you got some money to spend. Why don't you just farm it out? And there's actually a number of reasons for that. One is because I've learned that a lot of the time, specialized labor, you know, especially on stuff like this, I understand electricians and machinists and welding stuff. Some of that's pretty well up there skill level wise, but a lot of stuff like this, just because you don't know how to do it isn't really a reason not to try to do it because you know you think about people who change tires for a living most of them didn't go through like four years of school and loads of debt and an apprenticeship to do that no they just had a basic understanding of what to do perhaps from a book perhaps from a mentor and then they did it a few times and, and now they change tires for a living and it's not that hard to acquire that level of knowledge the other thing is hope you guys can still hear me uh, a lot of stuff like this really doesn't take long. This took far, far under 45 minutes to do. I don't think I could have loaded this stuff up in the truck, driven to the local tire shop, paid them probably 50 bucks to do this, and driven back in that amount of time, and the amount of time that I was able to just do this by myself for. So there's that, and then the other thing is, you know, if you, if you spend money to have someone else do something that you can do yourself, yes, you get it done, but you know, that money's basically gone forever to you now. Uh, whereas with this, I st not only did I get this mounted, I still have the 50 bucks in my pocket or whatever the tire shop would have charged to do this. And like I said, it really wasn't that much, that much work. So like Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're probably right. And with most things, I don't know if you realize this or not, you know, no offense to anybody, but the average person in society isn't exactly Einstein 2.0. If you're willing to make a wholehearted attempt to do things, you can usually do about anything the average person can, if you're willing to. So, all right, this looks like it's getting in here pretty well. The whole eight PSI, that, that side's still propped up by a hammer. So, uh, if it doesn't look level on the floor, that's why it isn't. But nothing's exploded and killed me yet, which, you know, normally I take that as a pretty good sign. about 10 PSI. Oh, that's really friggin' hard. That's harder than it looks, just with 10 PSI in there. Um, I don't actually know how much air to put in this. The back tires on the other two tractors only get 18 PSI. I don't know if these have a max written on them or something. Oh, I don't want to read all this crap. Why don't they just give you the good stuff? All right, yeah, that's about 15 PSI or so. And we'll stick it on the tractor and take it from there. <laughs> 